Hello and welcome to Tela Innovator. So this is Destin Miller, Poly Innovator, and this is episode number six of the Poly Innovator Omni Content. Now, before I get started on this episode, I have to say it's been a very long time since I made my last Omni Content, and it's been something I've been talking about all this past year. To be quite honest, I stopped doing the Omni Content purely because I started doing these interviews, and then eventually the procrastination kind of killed me. I kept thinking, oh, this mini series is going to be too hard. This was my first mini series that I'm making, and this is around the idea of the multidisciplinary spectrum. And since it has been a minute, I'm just going to quickly go over that just for people to be in the right state of mind. Poly innovator is a term I made in order to be this polymath of innovation. But what is a polymath, right? What is a jack of all trades, which is why you're here? And this idea of all these different terms, there's also generalist, multipotentialite, expert generalist. Like, what do all these mean? And on top of that, too, where do they all fit within each other? And so no one's really made a, quite a spectrum of these terms, including specialists or bi-specialists and that kind of thing. Think of someone who does nanotechnology. They're a bi-specialist. They have dual specialty. But there's also people who are jack-of-all-trades and generalists and in polymath. And you can see my hands coming up because each of these terms kind of indicates that they actually have a certain level of knowledge. Now, we're commonly known as jack-of-all-trades to be kind of like, okay, master of none. Well, that's not necessarily true, and that's why when you read the post and hopefully from this video, you'll get the ideas that I'm trying to show you that being a jack of all trades is not a bad thing. It's just a matter of how deep of knowledge do you have and what areas are you focusing on? Are you managing your time well? And is it leading into generalism or is it just being a T-shaped person, specialist with a wide base? And so it's one of those things where we're going to go into that. And so my ambition is to inform and educate a community of innovators. And this also includes people who are polymathic and genetic of all traits or Jill of all traits in this case. So whether you are watching on Tele Innovator or listening on the Polycast, you're here in the right place. So by the end of this video, you should know what a jack of all trades is, ideally. And so it's interesting because in this post, I definitely go more in detail than what I'm going to do in this video. The video is going to be kind of short form. Same thing if you're listening in on the Polycast. It's going to be pretty short. But the idea is jack of all trades, master of none, continues. A lot of people don't know this. the saying actually continues after that, but oftentimes better than a master of one. And I think there's some interpretations that say sometimes better than a master of one. But either way, it's improving. It's actually a good quote. Like, because you are a jack of all trades, you have your hands in all these different cookie jars. And what that gives you is this cross transtextual knowledge, cross-disciplinary and transcontextual knowledge, meaning you could pull from many different areas and work them and weave them together. So when I look at how to build a computer, I also look at it from like a teaching standpoint. I look at it from a puzzle standpoint. My video game background makes it almost gamified to build a computer. Like, what next step do I have to accomplish? Yes, I gained EXP, whatever you may be. Like, you're, you're approaching it from that other point of view. And... Now, I think that's a skill you have to develop, and a lot of jack-of-all-trades still need to do that. Meaning, whenever you are pursuing that particular wide depth, you're doing that most of the time because of curiosity. You're driven by that innate desire to learn about all these different things. You have so many things gathering your attention, and so one day you're learning about this, the next thing you're learning about that. Some people would even refer to it as ADHD or ADD because you just can't focus on one thing for too long. I don't think it's even neurodiversity's sake. I think it's the matter of our innate human curiosity. So a lot of people might even think they have ADD purely because they're curious a lot. Overly curious person, people have been misdiagnosed over years quite a lot and so just for myself for example just on friday i got super into learning about nfts and metaverse and web 3.0 and i made a massive blog post that you could check out on my website and it was just one of those things where i stopped what i was doing because i, I want to learn this and i feel like i need to learn this for my own content creation sake anyways putting my first step towards that new frontier on the internet but since I put away the stuff I was working on to focus on that, wouldn't you say that I didn't have the ability to focus? No, because I focused really deeply and intently on learning. In my experience, 
when it comes to being a jack of all trades. It's a matter of time management and also knowing who you are. I like to work in sprints and I noticed that over the past few years more and more so. Like some weeks I'm really into learning, some weeks I'm really into creating. And then every once in a blue moon I'll get a week where I'm doing both. And that's really great. And it's, it's interesting how by following those waves of interest and following the dopamine as one guy on TikTok says, it's one of those things where you can actually become more prolific and more powerful in a way. So the next thing I wanted to mention is this idea of, is it useful or is it not useful? If you're learning a skill that you're not actually going to be able to do anything with, why the heck are you doing it? And that's the kind of thing where sometimes we're curious about things that aren't that important. And so should you pursue that? Well, me learning about blogging back in 2011 may have seemed like it wasn't that important, but now I'm doing it prolifically and I've been doing it for the past 10 years and it's become a foundation of my content creation. Blogging is a content creation skill. It's a habit that was literally creating out there. I think if you're creating something, whether it's TikToks or whatever you're doing, even if it's not like a great series, even if you're just doing it for the fun of it and you're not actually being pro at it, so to speak, it's okay, because what you're doing is you're focusing on what you enjoy doing, and eventually you're going to learn skills from that. Being on TikTok teaches you a lot about video making, and if you get really prolific with those uh, filters and the editing software part of it, it's actually a decent editor if you know what you're doing, and you can go in there and make things look really cool. I actually made a video recently where people didn't even realize I added like 13 different filters to it, and it was just because it looked so good on the onset that they didn't even realize it took so much work to get it out much to my dismay. But my point is that like that's a skill, that's a hobby that may not be seeming that it's productive, but it is useful in the long run. Whereas maybe knitting is something that's not as useful, but it's a good hobby to have. And so the, how to tell the difference between being useful and useless is a very important skill and distinction to have. But employers also need to learn this skill as well, because we're seeing a lot of generalists pop up. And it's not that like they weren't here before, they just weren't vocal about it before. So something I talk about a lot in this post is that it is in our nature to be curious. It's in our nature actually to be generalists. Uh, I don't know even know if I made it into this post or not because I probably found this out after the fact, but there was a study out in one of the renowned universities. I have to look it up again to remember which university it was, but it was a pretty renowned one where they're talking about why Homo sapiens evolved and not like the Homo erectus and Neanderthals and all the other hominins that were around at the time that we came about. Why did Homo sapiens stay alive when all the other ones didn't? And the main conclusion that came from it was that it was because of the generalists. When the Homo sapiens were moving across the continents, moving into a frigid temperature or maybe a drier air and all these different climates and all these different environments where you couldn't cook, uh, grow the same kind of crops, it was because they were generalists and able to adapt to these new environments and biomes that they were actually able to survive. And throughout our history, we've had generalists, we've had people who were doing many different things and causing a lot of progression in our species. Think Leonardo da Vinci, for example. If his notebooks were discovered 500 years ago instead of recently, they would have dramatically advanced multiple sciences. They would have created sciences that weren't even around until 100, a couple hundred years later. It's insane to think about how someone who was a generalist, someone who was a polymath, was able to advance or create certain sciences that weren't at there yet already. Such as like ocular science or laser physics, that kind of thing. Light physics, I mean. And so this idea of being a generalist is nothing new. It's been in our history and it's okay. And that's the point of this post. I want people to realize it's okay. And if you're not a productive jack of all trades, that's okay too. But realize why you're not and are you, can you do something about it? And as we go down this mini-series, we're going to see more and more of these terms. And you may not identify with yourself a jack-of-all-trades or jill-of-all-trades. You might identify more as a polymath, if you're really deep in knowledge. Or maybe just generalist, because you're kind of in that middle ground. Or maybe you feel like you are a specialist, and that's okay. But understanding where you are on the spectrum, I think, is very important to understanding your own success. So, thank you. Look forward to these next episodes. I think you're going to really enjoy. Bye.